Welcome back to Director's Choice. With epic fighting scenes, amazing costumes, and a perfect script to boot, Naruto was a life changing experience for old viewers, re watchers, and new viewers alike. At the heart of its greatness is the amazing cast of characters, including the main protagonist Naruto, who the show is named after. But like every great main character, Naruto's greatest antagonist and ally is an epic personality himself, Sasuke Uchiha. In this episode of Director's Choice, we are going to take a closer look at one of the most complex characters in the Naruto series. What led to the parallel difference between his childhood, young adult, and adult personalities? How did his pain fuel his vengeance? Which friendships helped him survive the darkness in his mind? We'll dive into all these and so much more in the next few minutes. Here is the breakdown of Sasuke Uchiha's psychology. When he was an infant, Sasuke was very close to his brother, Itachi, and their relationship was so tight that he wouldn't let someone else hold him. Sasuke grew up under the shadow of his older brother, Itachi, who was a genius. And although Sasuke was less than, according to their father, he never let himself resent his brother. Instead, he looked up to Itachi. You definitely are Itachi. I'm impressed. I didn't know you had been able to master it as well, Sasuke. He had his mother's care and Itachi's love to get him by. So Sasuke was a well-loved and happy child. Sasuke spent his days with a smile on his face, and he worked hard to please his loved ones. Sasuke wanted to be worthy of his clan name, and he adored his brother's achievements. He threw himself into his education, training, and practice to become the closest version of Itachi that he could be. But his father never regarded him highly. I can tell part of you is still the same. But I've heard from others what's happened to you. Sasuke felt the impact of his father's constant disappointment in him not being the genius that his brother was, but he didn't let it get to him. All the while, Sasuke kept trying to earn the respect of his father. Sasuke lived in a comfortable and somewhat fun life until tragedy hit him in the worst way possible. Father, I don't understand. Why did the shinobi try to kill me? The one person that Sasuke had respected, loved, and adored the most in his entire life was the perpetrator of these actions that ended up tearing everything he knew apart. Itachi had killed their family. Just promise me this. <laughs> that you'll take care of Sasuke. Leaving Sasuke as his only remaining family member, Itachi went further and broke Sasuke's heart when he told him that he never loved him. That was the undoing for Sasuke and everything fell apart. So what? I don't care! You're here right in front of me right now! And I have questions for you! Ask me later. Sasuke's life got defined by the pain he felt at a very young age. Just as he was figuring out his life, identity, and position in society, everything seemed to work out against him. His life shattered from the very roots and he was the sole branch that was left hanging on. His brother Itachi, who had been the beaming light after which Sasuke had wanted to live his life, had destroyed their family, leaving Sasuke to deal with the grief and the heartbreak. Getting the idea that Itachi didn't love him as he had thought while growing up was the last straw that broke Sasuke and changed his personality. Why must there be fighting in life? Who knows? See ya. From a cheerful and affectionate demeanor, Sasuke got a cold resolve and became calm to the point of being stoic. Sasuke had only one thing keeping him going, the anger and hurt he felt towards Itachi. Sasuke's entire resolve and life mission had become to ruin Itachi. His brother was a genius, so Sasuke knew that he had to become really powerful to defeat Itachi in battle. Pain from the loss of his family, Sasuke also had to deal with the reality that Itachi never loved him. 
Sasuke became untouchable by the opinions of others, common passions and interests, and it seemed like nothing ever brought him joy. Of course, it was all understandable because his life had literally turned upside down and he had to navigate an existence without a family to go home to, especially as Itachi had become his number one enemy. You don't have the courage to tell me the truth! I already know everything about you anyway. The desolation that Sasuke struggled with could have easily overwhelmed him, and it almost did, but he found a way to use it as fuel for his anger and that didn't exactly bring about a better outcome. When everything in his life became insignificant compared to the goal of destroying Itachi and revenging the death of his family, nothing could move Sasuke except the mention of his brother. But what are you even doing here? You're dead! Kabuto's Jutsu. I have become a reanimated shinobi. Sasuke lost all respect for culture and norms. He even stopped using the sensei and sama honorifics, which in Japanese culture was the rudest thing a person could do. Sasuke exclusively devoted several years to learning all he could and gaining all the abilities he could, with one plan in mind, to kill Itachi. Sasuke's pain and desolation were channeled into becoming the worst version of himself, although at the time he justified it by carrying the responsibility for avenging his family's deaths. That is, until he found out the truth. I told you before when we fought against each other. We each live inside our own fantasies. Sasuke's heart and mind were darkened by vengeance at two different points in his life. Sasuke's only focus was avenging his clan by killing Itachi, and his old brother never did anything to discourage this mission. Instead, Itachi fueled Sasuke's passion and advised him on ways to get powerful enough to defeat him. Sasuke was so detached from society that he couldn't establish any friendships. All he did when he met new people was to assess them as possible challenges. Although he learned the value of teamwork through Kakashi Hatake's lessons, Sasuke's vengeance isn't quelled for so long. When he meets Itachi again, Sasuke's pursuit of power returns in a more fearsome manner and he goes as far as cutting off ties with the village. That won't bring anyone happiness. Nobody at all. Not you. Not me. Sasuke's reaction to pain and disappointment is extreme, and it shows how much heartbreak can influence a person's life. He was willing and ready to risk everything he had achieved to complete one blind goal, killing Itachi. But at the end of the day, it was important for him to find the truth within him, and he realized that some of the methods he was exploring to gain the power to kill Itachi would ultimately bring shame to the clan. Before he could learn that his entire life's purpose had been misguided, Sasuke had succeeded in killing Itachi in battle, and then his heart broke again, renewing his vengeance for a second time. After Itachi's death, Sasuke finds out that his older brother had loved him to the point of sacrificing their entire clan to protect Sasuke's life. Another part of that sacrifice was the lie that Itachi hadn't loved Sasuke. Itachi knew his younger brother wouldn't have dealt with the grief and reality if he didn't have the anger and hurt to fuel him, so he decided to let Sasuke hate him. When Sasuke learned this, it gave him a new sense of desolation. He felt responsible for his clan's death, and he needed somewhere to direct the anger that came with that realization. So, Sasuke switched his target to Konoha, seeking vengeance on its citizens for their role in destroying his family. His conversation has started already. This is dangerous. I know. This is the first time I've seen Gata get like that before fighting. That's how powerful an opponent Sasuke is. Although he knew his new mission went against everything Itachi had taught him, Sasuke was too far consumed by the darkness that all he wanted to do was to cause pain to everyone who had ever caused him pain. Sasuke was lost in the darkness for so long until an encounter with a reincarnated version of Itachi. After this encounter, Sasuke tried to find a middle ground by volunteering as a true Hokage, someone who will be responsible for killing and hurting for the greater good. At that point, Naruto stepped in and successfully brought light into Sasuke's darkened mind. Naruto put their friendship front and center, helping Sasuke find the much needed worth that he was unknowingly seeking. However, stepping out of the darkness meant Sasuke had to deal with some shadows and reflections. Why? Why do you care so much about me? It's because I finally have a bond with someone 
That's exactly why I'm going to- Navigating his way out of the darkness was a tumultuous journey for Sasuke. At first, he wanted to die and take the cursed clan with him, but Naruto stepped in once again and saved him from himself. But it wasn't easy for Sasuke to find his way back to the light that came with a renewed hope. Am I dead? Though he carried on as a form of lone cavalry to restore peace in different places, Sasuke still struggled to show affection and commit to his connections with people. But on his self-ascribed pursuit of atonement, Sasuke took on the mantle of Itachi's purpose in making sure that the future of Konoha wasn't bleak and obsolete. During his process of redemption, which was executed through his long travels, Sasuke relearned the value of friendship and the beauty in having lasting connections. When I understood your hurt, I finally saw you as a comrade. And conversely... Firstly, and most important to his character development, Sasuke's friendship with Naruto was his saving grace in so many ways. Naruto showed him that undermining your opponent was always a bad idea. But Naruto also showed him that friendship could be long-lasting. To surmise, Naruto gave Sasuke the type of love he had been trailing after for most of his life, unconditional and unrestricted. And in some ways, this helped Sasuke in his relationship with Sakura. Sasuke had been aware of his former teammates' affections for him, but he went to great lengths to hurt her feelings. Just before he begins his journey on atonement and redemption, he apologizes to Sakura, who understands, like Naruto, and they maintain their relationship throughout his travels. Later on, Sasuke and Sakura get married and have a daughter, Sarada, who brings Sasuke's arc to a complete circle. While he was mostly preoccupied with his duties and adult responsibilities, Sasuke still noticed he was failing as a father to Sarada. As an adult, Sasuke knew to learn from his past mistakes as he tries to be more expressive towards his loved ones, though he maintained his arrogance and ruthlessness against opponents. All in all, Sasuke found the balance to love and be loved. Despite all the pain and troubles he had gone through earlier in his life, Sasuke was able to find value in the things that truly matter about life, which made his redemption journey a success. As a child, Sasuke had been happy and mindless. As a young man, he had been troubled. But as an adult, Sasuke had found the perfect balance to cope with life. And a chunk of that is thanks to the relationships he had with people who weren't willing to give up on his salvation. Everyone goes through really dark times in life, and having the right people in your corner can really help you make it through the darkness. Just ask Sasuke Uchiha. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us on the breakdown of Sasuke Uchiha psychology. Take a look at this other recent clip by Director's Choice and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.